Synthesis, catabolism involves the breakdown. Is that okay? Not too much to say about metabolism. Let's move to the topic of the day, bioenergetics. Bioenergetics. What do you think bioenergetics is? What do you think? Bioenergetics. What do you think it is? Advantage of being in a school of medicine, words are self-explanatory. When you get trouble with the word, just look at the word. It might just say something. Bioenergetics. Anyone? Guys? Yes. What do you think? Okay, from, from the word itself, bioenergetics. Mm -hmm. When you break it down, so this of two words, there's bio, which is the living part. Mm -hmm. you know that. So it's like, it's a living energy. Living energy? Yes, that is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. It's okay, guys. Thank you. Thank you. At least he's seen something. Bio, living, life. Energetic, energy. Life, living energy. Fine. Yes, Elliot? Um, I think um, this bioenergetics is basically how living cells uh, acquire and produce energy for their metabolic actions. It's how living cells acquire and produce their energy for their metabolic reactions. That's according to Elliot. Okay. What are you picking now that it's look, look in as much as what he said living energy might scare you it has opened your mind that there are two words here up to here so figure it out what do you think yes my friend what do you think yes sir Sounds fine. That's what he's thinking, which is good. Any other thoughts, guys? <coughs> yes, what do you think? Uh, I think we have my understanding is that the uh, oil energetics used to be a uh, process that takes place in the living thing through which energy is produced or that depends on the life. Oh, processes have happened in the living thing where energy is produced, so how energy is actually produced. Sounds good. So guys, look, words in medicine are self-explanatory. Meet a complicated word in medicine that you're not very sure of, try to look for certain things that you're familiar with. And trust me, you might just figure it out. Is that clear? Don't be too scared by the length of word. I'm talking to a friend of mine, Who's the lawyer last time who was saying when you learn law you increase your vocabulary by over a thousand words <clears throat> but they say when you learn medicine you increase it by about ten thousand words that's what they say there are words like peroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria <laughs> sounds long right and crazy but when you write it it's self-explanatory Eternal hemoglobinuria. Right? Paroxysmal. This usually refers to something sudden, right? Nocturnal. Night. Hemoglobin. Hemoglobin. Uria. Nuria. Self-explanatory, right? 
So when you find trouble, words in medicine normally explain themselves. This is why the money for buying a medical dictionary, I hope my mother doesn't know this, doesn't hear this, I used it for something else. Because I realized a medical dictionary, you might not read in it. Did you buy one? <laughs> or did they send you the money? Let's use it for something else. Okay, fine. Bioenergetics. This really is a phenomenon that explains the transfer and utilization of energy in a biological system. It really just tells you how energy is going to be transferred and utilized in a biological system or in a living system. Right? In fact, most of these chemical reactions that are going to be occurring inside the cell would really have to ensure that they make thermodynamic sense. You see, you might encounter a number of chemical reactions. Some reactions would appear something like A, which is a reactant, is being converted into B, the product. This is how your chemical reactions are going to be looking. In fact, you have encountered chemical reactions now, now that you've already learned your TCA cycle, right? So maybe just to build up, you will have seen reactions looking like this. What determines whether this reaction is going to proceed in the manner where it's written, that is reactants being converted into products, is this. It is the difference in the activation energy of the products and that one of the reactants. For the reaction to proceed the way it is written, one principle has to be met. The energy of the reactants should be higher than the energy of the products. Is that clear? If it's that way, then the reaction will proceed as written. The reactants will be converted into products. This energy we are talking about is the free energy. The energy available to do the work. In fact, this free energy is the one if it is in a form where the reactants have higher free energy than the products, the energy difference you are going to see is going to be negative. Why? Because this is higher than that. What do I mean? I mean that what determines whether a chemical reaction will proceed is not so much the concentration, but really the energy available. This should have lower energy than that. Okay? You just have to look at the energy of the two. If this has higher energy than that, the reaction will proceed as it is written. Which goes on to say, <coughs> The energy of B, the products, when you subtract the energy of A, the reactants, since this one is smaller than that, the net change in free energy should be what? A negative number. Because it's only then that the condition that the energy of the reactants should be higher than the product is going to be fulfilled. Does this make sense? Making sense? Yes. This is why we say a reaction which has a negative free energy would proceed spontaneously as it is written. Because the energy of the reactants is higher than that one of the products. In fact, the energy, a reaction which has a negative change in free energy is referred to as an hexagonic reaction. It would proceed as written. This goes on to tell you that what would determine this reaction proceeding is basically the difference here. What is the difference? If this number is negative, it would proceed. However, what if the energy of the products is higher than that one of the reactants? This means when you subtract the energy of B minus the energy of A, the answer is going to be a positive number. 
you have a positive change in free energy. Guys, if this reaction has a positive change in free energy, it's referred to as an endagonic reaction. And it won't proceed as written until the next change in free energy of that reaction has been made negative. Somehow. Is that okay? <coughs> now, you might be thinking of a circumstance where these two are equal. What if the net change in free energy is a zero? B minus A. This is equal to that, and then you get a zero. Net change in free energy is a zero. What does this, does this tell us? Somebody says there is no reaction. Is that true? No reaction? What do others think? Is it that there is no reaction, the reaction stops? <coughs> Sorry? Exactly. The reaction is at equilibrium. What does that mean? Does it mean the reaction has stopped? No. To the contrary, when the net change in free energy is a zero, it doesn't mean the reaction has stopped. What it means is that the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. They are occurring at the same speed and therefore there will be no net gain or loss of either products or reactors. <coughs> Elliot. And does it mean such a reaction is reversible? Ideally, if this reaction is reversible, exactly. But most of the cases, when a chemical reaction is happening, what will be happening is that you'll be seeing disappearance of, of substrates, of reactants, and production of products. Right? And then ultimately, if the net change is opposite in free energy, you might see that there could be dis disintegration back into the reactants. That is for reversible reactions, especially those reactions which are actually reversible. This is actually what is going to happen. So, in essence, if a reaction is at equilibrium, it doesn't mean the reaction has stopped. Is that okay? Therefore, when you look at a chemical reaction, what you need to ask yourself first is that what is the energy of the reactants in comparison to the energy of the products? And that is what, what is going to determine whether this will be converted into that. If this is higher than that, it fulfills the statement that the difference between the products and the reactants is negative. Therefore, reactor, reaction proceeds as written. Now, we may mention that the key thing here is basically just the energy difference. But there could be circumstances where you want to compare the energy change between two different reactions. To do that, it becomes quite tricky without putting into the aspect of concentrations. Therefore, there is what is referred to as the standard free energy change. What that is, is really the change in free energy when the concentration of the reactants and the concentration of the products are all held at one more per liter. And this is happening under standard conditions. So if the concentration of this is at one more per liter, and that one one more per liter, this changes from free energy to standard free energy with a superscript like that. One may be wondering, why should you have this? Well, this is to help you compare the free energy of two different chemical reactions. You can break this one down to something we can easily relate to. Let's say you want to build a road and then 
you are asking people to quote you the price of building a road. So you ask two people, you tell them, hey, I want to build a road, without explaining much, how much will you charge? This person tells you, ah, okay, I'll charge you one million. Oh, okay. You get scared. You go to the next person. I need a road. I need a, you to build a road for me. How much would you charge me? 500,000. Who would you go? <laughs> one million or 500,000? <laughs> Let's say the quality is the same. 500,000. Well, that is only correct if you think of more things or if you ask more questions. 500,000 which you are charging me, it's in relation to how big a road. How big is the road that you're talking about? Because this guy can be telling you he's charging you 500,000 for a road which is just a hundred meters long. Well, this guy who's telling you one million, he's charging you one million for one kilometer road. Who's cheaper? One the one million, right? In the same way, to compare, you need to have a certain value that you have to narrow it down to, which is one more per liter. Then you can compare effectively. Otherwise, if you just say, well, the free energy in this one was negative, therefore this one has a, better, has a higher negative free energy, without considering the concentration, you are actually working like someone who's asking a quotation for a road without asking how much of a road they are going to build for them in that amount. You get the sense? So this is why the standard free energy becomes very important. I would like to tell you of another phenomenon. And it is that, well, if a reaction is going to proceed in this way,